Good morning, and welcome to worship. Good morning. Uh, this morning we rejoice with uh, Tyler and Taylor DeRay, who were joined in marriage yesterday at J. Cook Park amidst 50 degree weather and frozen fingers. Uh, <laughs> and we remember with Thanksgiving uh, the life of James Valla, whose uh, celebration of life will be here on Saturday. Also, please keep uh, a few others in your prayers. Uh, this week we have lost a cousin of Gerald's, uh, Elaine Niskanen, one of my cousins, Ken Erickson, and a friend of uh, Vicki James. Help me with the last name. The Spiegel letter. Okay. Um, and of course, the family and friends of Elvin. And Elvin's service, I believe, will be on October 22nd. Me? So. Other announcements? With that, let us stand and invite God into our presence. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join me in our call to worship. Do not be afraid, but stand firm. God, God, will, defend us. God will defend us. We will be still and trust in our God. Let us confess our sins before God and one another. Let us pray. God of promise, you have given us all we are and all we have, and still we have not trusted you fully. We have tried to be a God in our own lives, hurting others and those around us in our attempts to control. Wash us clean in the waters of your salvation and bring us back into the right relationship with you. Amen. God welcomes you home with open arms and forgives you all your sins for the sake of Jesus Christ. By the power of the Holy Spirit, live in the promise of God's love, freely given. Amen. We turn to our gathering hymn, Thank the Ever Great Redeemer, number 618 in the Red Book. Saving God, 
With awesome power you led your people through the sea and rescued them from those who would harm them. Continue to lead us through our challenges that we might sing your praises on the other side. Amen. Please be seated. Our first reading for today is from the Old Testament book of Exodus. When the king of Egypt was told that the people had fled, the minds of Pharaoh and his officials were changed towards the people. And they said, what have we done letting Israel leave our service? So he had his chariot made ready and took his army with him. He took 600 picked chariots and all the other chariots of Egypt with officers over all of them. As Pharaoh drew near, the Israelites looked back and there were the Egyptians advancing on them. In great fear, the Israelites cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, was it because there, was no, there were no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us bringing us out of Egypt? Is this not the very thing we told you in Egypt? Let us alone and let us serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. But Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm and see the deliverance that the Lord will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you and you have only to keep still. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord drove back the sea by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, let us flee from the Israelites, for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. And the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and their chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and at dawn the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers and the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea, not one of them remained. But the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. We turn to our focus hymn. Lord, please. Lord. <laughs> Sunday after Pentecost is from the Gospel according to St. Matthew. Please stand as you're ready. Now after the Magi had left, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up, take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt. 
and remain there until I tell you, for Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother by night, and went to Egypt and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what had been spoken by the prophet by the Lord through the prophet. Out of Egypt I have called my son. This is the gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. I invite the children to come forward. He's not having any part of it. Is he? <laughs> Good morning. How are you? Somebody did it brought some hardware home from a uh, what gymnastics meet? Good job. Okay, well, you know, God's people have been in Egypt for a long time. And now when Joseph was there, he had a special relationship with Pharaoh the king, right? And but now Joseph is is has died and that Pharaoh has died and there's a new one in his place. And this one doesn't even remember what Joseph did. And so he decides, well, these these Israelites are getting pretty strong. There were lots of them. They were living in the land of Goshen. And he decided, well, let's just turn them into slaves. Well, he thought that was that was going to keep them down, right? And instead, they thrived even more. Well, he's okay, fine. Then we're going to let them gather their own straw for these bricks that they're making. Didn't bother the Israelites. They kept on working. But finally, things got so bad that the Israelites said, Oh, God, please save us. And God sent Moses. Remember Moses? He's the one who was floating around in a basket. Yeah. And Moses led the people out of Egypt. After ten plagues that were pretty awful. I mean, things like flies and grasshoppers. Ugh. But, on their way, Pharaoh decides that he made a mistake letting these people go. And so he sent his whole army, himself included, to chase down these Israelites and bring them back. And then we get this wonderful story of God parting the sea to let the Israelites get through on dry ground. And when the Egyptians got too close and got into the sea. What happened? Closed the sea. They were all drowned. I mean, they couldn't get out. Their wheels were all caked with mud. And they were just all gone. God had fulfilled his promise to these Israelites and to Moses and saved them from this army that was going to drag them back to slavery. What does that say to us? I think God is out there for us too? I think so. I think when we're in trouble, our God is right there with us and willing to rescue us and keep us safe from, from our enemies. Now, it may not look like that sometimes, but we know that ultimately our God is one in control. And our God is going to save us. So let us pray. Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for being with us every day of our lives. We thank you for guiding us through our own rough waters and seas. We thank you for protecting us as we go about our daily lives. We thank you most for saving us for eternal life. And now be with us this week as we live into our lives here on this earth. And help us remember that you are always with us. Amen. All right, thanks, kids. Bye.
Grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, the risen Christ. Last Sunday, we left Joseph in prison. And we missed a few things between our readings last week and today. Joseph interpreted some dreams. And the result was his rise to power in Egypt. And in his new job, he was responsible for saving not only Egypt, but neighboring countries and his own family. And in fact, he was reunited with the brothers who had sold him, reunited with his father, and reunited with his little brother. In the years that followed, Israel prospered in the land of Goshen. But things changed. Joseph and the Pharaoh who valued Joseph died. And generations later, a new Pharaoh had come to power, and this one had no idea who this favored Hebrew even was, let alone what he had accomplished. To the new Pharaoh, the Hebrew people were viewed as a threat. Life in Egypt became unbearable for God's people, and they cried out. The stories of Moses being saved from slaughter and the plagues God sent to convince Pharaoh to let the Israelites go our favorite stories of our Sunday school days. Those plagues ended with the destruction of all the firstborn in Egypt, except those of the Israelites. Pharaoh was finally persuaded, and the people of Israel left for the Promised Land. And that became an event that would become one of the very foundations of the worship of the Jewish people. God had lived up to and kept promises. The story of the Exodus and the reading for today left me with a simple question. When? How many times have you asked God, when? I have a few questions that arise from just reading the daily newspapers or listening to the news on the television. When will all of the mayhem in the Middle East be settled so that peace might reign? When will the war in the Ukraine end? When will Congress decide to set aside party differences enough to find the compromises and get something done? When will we finally see an end to disease? When will everyone on this earth have enough to eat? When will our God end the suffering of so many people in our own neighborhoods who struggled with cancer and a host of other troubles? When? When? The Israelites had been in Egypt for 560 years. And most of those years they had been treated as slaves. Make bricks. Get your own straw. Don't let any male babies live. After Joseph and the Pharaoh, who had so valued Joseph, had both died, it hadn't taken very long for the new Pharaohs to see these Hebrews as a threat. The new rulers didn't much care to hear all those stories about how Joseph had saved the day. All they cared about was preserving and protecting themselves and their power. I think we can relate to that, right? God had made promises to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. When? When would God keep those promises? When would God rescue them? Those had to be the thoughts of the Israelites living in Goshen. Israel's wait had been long and hard. And then as they fled from Egypt, one more trial, a seemingly impossible hurt, was in front of them. And the enemy was close behind. They must have thought, is this what we've been waiting for all these years? And in fact, that's exactly what they asked Moses. Some years ago, I had several long conversations with one of my colleagues. 
since I haven't received his permission to tell this story, I'm just going to call him Phil. He had been stuck. Stuck in a call that was no longer working for him. He had asked to have his mobility papers submitted to numerous congregations over a period of nearly 10 years. And during that time, he had only had one interview. And before that interview was finished, both he and the congregation's call committee knew it was not a good match. So he waited. He waited and waited and waited some more. Meanwhile, he continued to faithfully serve his congregations, even though his heart really wasn't in it any longer. He couldn't understand what God was up to. Surely, he said, surely there must be a congregation where my considerable gifts could be used more effectively. But he waited. He prayed. And I prayed. And 12 years into his long wait, he called me. He said, Larry, it's happening. Oh, really? It's finally happening. I said, okay, what's happening? He says, I have a new call. He said, the congregation is voting on Sunday. But that's really just a formality at this point, you know. I said, I know sound of your voice tells me you think it is a pretty good match, too. I said, I do. Larry, I feel renewed and excited. We share a vision for God's mission. And we're going to do some really good work together. Well, now he is 10 years into that new call. And he's still excited. What is more interesting is that the congregations he left also have new pastors. And those changes have revitalized those very congregations he left. Often we don't know or understand God's time frame. Or even God's goals. Sometimes our prayers seem to go without answers. That doesn't mean we should ever give up hope. For the Israelites, the promised land was still a full generation away from their grasp. All they could do was wait and do their best to trust their God. Writer and poet J.D. Smith once said, We should use the waiting time to get our hearts right, so that when the wait is over, we are obedient to his call. He's going to strengthen us so that we can run without becoming weary. What does that say for his expectation of us? Whatever it is that he will call us to do, he expects that we will put forth a full effort. He will give us the power and energy to go the distance for him. No, oh, it's solid advice. It was for Israel, and it is for us. Standing still is just not a good option. Sometimes we have to follow into the scary waters. Always we need to trust God to lead us to safety, lead us to our promised land. The good news for us is that our waiting is never in vain. God is never late, not on God's timetable. Prayers will be answered. And we are promised rescue from all the perils we face. Well, the wait may seem long for us. However, our God always acts in response to our cries of when. Amen. Let us turn to our next chant. I know that my Redeemer lives. It's number 619. We will sing verses 1, 4, 5, and 8. I may just join you. Please stand. <laughs>
church, let us affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He will be seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident in the promises of our covenant God, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Our petitions this morning will end. God of promise, please respond. Hear our prayer. Powerful deliverer, you free your people daily from sin and death. Remind us to practice gratitude for the amazing lives you have given us. God of promise, beautiful creator, teach us to nurture and sustain all the things that you have dreamed and breathed into life so that your amazing world might live on for generations to come. God of promise, wise guide, hold the hands of the children you have called to be leaders in this world. Help them to become fully reliant upon you for their guidance and strength in their daily decisions toward justice and peace. God of promise, God of grace and love, we pray for those in the path of Hurricane Ian. You are the refuge and strength of your people and a very present help in time of trouble. Protect the innocent and helpless, heal the hurt, and uphold all your people with your love. God of promise, benevolent healer, bring to health and wholeness all who suffer ailments of body, mind, and spirit especially Betty, Gerald, Frank, Mark, Marty, Greg, Ron, Bill, Stan, Terry, Cindy, Barb, Kevin, Alessandra, Deb, Kaya, Axel, Cassie, Harry and Judy, Arlene, Trish, Gordy, Andy and Mary, Evan, Dan, <coughs> Curtis, and their families, and the fra families and friends of James Valla, Elvin Sarah Ken Erickson, Elaine Niskanen, and James Despiglieri. God of promise. Just ruler, you are the God of all peoples. Help us to remember that all the children of the earth belong to you, and that none are to be left to suffer at our hands. God of promise. God of love, we give you thanks for the love you have given to Tyler and Taylor DeRay who were joined in holy matrimony yesterday. May their lives reflect your love in the years to come. God of promise. Maker of saints, with gratitude we remember all who have come before us and remain faithful to you through lives of extreme challenge. May we follow their example until we are reunited in your holy presence. God of promise. Trusting in your grace and mercy, we lift these prayers to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Amen. Let us share the peace. Please be seated. We receive our offering.
given us all that we have, even our very lives. Accept now these gifts we return to you with gratitude for the work of your church. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus teaches. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And it is not the temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God's love has brought us into the life God has promised. Now we join with all God's children at this table in remembrance of him who is God's promise fulfilled. Come and be fed. of our Lord Jesus Christ and his precious blood strengthen and preserve you unto eternal life. Peace be with you. Amen. Let us pray. God of the abundant table, you have refreshed our hearts in this meal with bread for the journey. Give us your grace on the road that we might serve our neighbors with joy for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. stand for the book. 
Thomas. God, who gives life to all things and frees us from despair, bless you with truth and peace. And may the Holy Trinity, one God, guide you always in faith, hope, and love. Amen. We turn to our closing hymn. Praise the Lord, O heavens, number 823. side.